Tuesday, May 2nd, 2017, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So I'd like to talk about the U.S. economy and the markets, uh, whether, you know, the U.S. economy is slowing down and whether stock stocks are, you know, overvalued, the general stock market. I know people have been calling for the last two, three years for crashes and the market just keeps levitating higher. Um, there's an old saying that the market can remain uh, irrational for longer than you can remain solvent. And I think it's very, very uh, appropriate, you know, saying for nowadays, especially with the way central banks are acting in the markets. Uh, manipulating the markets, uh, buying, you know, assets, uh, bonds, even stocks. You know, the Swiss National Bank has a huge portfolio of stocks. They're even trading futures. We've seen um, uh, articles like on Zero Hedge, for example, how cent foreign central banks on the CME, the the um, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, they get preferential rates for trading all kinds of futures and options. Uh, central banks. I mean, I worked in futures and options for 20 years and uh, we did, uh, I worked for ABN AMRO uh, Bank, the Dutch bank, the futures department, and we did have one very big central bank as, a, as an account, but they never really did much. Uh, it was, I think, uh, very insignificant. And uh, so nowadays, central banks are very active in the markets. And uh, yeah, right now the markets seem, you know, not going anywhere really. The stock market is just uh, hovering between 20,500 and 21,000. Uh, the dollar, uh, as, as represented by the dollar index, basically has been hovering. Uh, between a hundred, you know, around a hundred for the last six months, even though it looks like uh, we're forming a top and uh, in the dollar index, in my opinion, it looks like we could go lower toward, you know, the next target could be around 95. The, the Japanese yen at the moment is keeping the dollar index from dropping quicker. The euro has recovered quite well since the first round of the French election. It will be interesting to see what happens, but it looks to me like the dollar is like topping in terms of the dollar index. There's a couple of interesting articles today on Zero Hedge. Uh, one of them says JP Morgan lists six red flags why it is starting to sell stocks. And they look at uh, the Citigroup Economic Surprise Index. Basically what that is, is... Um, Citigroup, they look at, uh, you know, all the economic data coming out of the U.S. and they have an expectation. And if uh, the when the number come out, uh, the number beats uh, their expectation, that's a plus for their, uh, you know, uh, economic surprise index. And vice versa, if the number comes lower than expected, that uh, economic index drops. And... Uh, since October last year, their economic index, surprise index, went from like zero to around 50. Uh, sorry, yeah, from around zero, which means that uh, the economic data uh, were coming out as they expected. So it went to zero all the way up to 60. And now it's uh, minus, uh, like minus 20 or a little more minus, like minus 22. So it means that all the numbers are starting, economic numbers are starting to come out, uh, you know, lower or weaker than they expect. And usually uh, the S&P has been tracking this uh, S&P, uh, sorry, the Citigroup Economic Surprise Index. Uh, here's the chart, as you can see. Um, so the S&P right now is diverging quite a bit from uh, this Citigroup uh, economic surprise index. So are the economic data going to pick up or is the market going to correct? And uh, a little ironic that JP Morgan's looking at Citigroup 
uh, economic surprise index. But they're saying that's one of the big reasons why uh, they're starting to sell stocks. So, um, yeah, what else? Um, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about the yield curve, the U.S. Treasury yield curve, which tracks uh, U.S. Uh, Treasury interest rates or yields. And uh, just looking here, like, uh, you know, not in too detailed uh, a fashion, but, for example, uh, looking at the United States rates and bonds from Bloomberg, Treasury yields, uh, the three-month uh, bill, for example, is up 66 basis points in the, the last year. The six-month is up 61. But when you go uh, further out the curve, the 10-year, for example, is up 43, and the 30-year is only up 26. What does that mean? That means that the, the curve is uh, flattening, uh, and... Uh, which means that uh, lending conditions are tightening uh, in the short, uh, you know, short-term yields, but longer-term rates are coming. They're not going up as quickly as the short-term rates, and eventually that could lead to what is called an inverted yield curve, where the short-term interest rates uh, get higher than the long-term interest rates. We're still far away from that. For example, the two-year yield is 126 right now, um, while the 30 year is 230. So um, still over 1% uh, difference there. Um, difficult to say, but the yield curve is not showing that the economy is overheating and that people, you know, investors are expecting higher uh, inflation. And by inflation, I, I mean, you know, I know the cost of living is still very high for the average person, but for investors, they look at these phony, uh, you know, data, and for some reason, they expect, you know, they don't expect their uh, the inflation they look at, which is the government CPI, to uh, get to be getting out of control or going higher. So that's the situation at the moment. We saw GDP. Uh, last week came out at 0.7 uh, on an annual basis for the first quarter. I know the uh, one of the, is it the St. Louis or the Atlanta Fed they predicted like 0.5, and now they've come out and said that the second quarter is going to be over 4%. I bet you uh, over the next few months they're going to revise that down. Um, uh, I think it's not realistic, especially when you look at this. Uh, What's happening to the data and the macro data, you know, the Citigroup uh, Economic Surprise Index. So um, I personally, you know, there's different kinds of investors. There's institutional investors, uh, mute, you know, pension funds. They always keep a, a weighting of stocks, bonds, uh, cash, maybe some commodities. Uh, that's a different, uh, you know, kettle of fish to the small investor who's trying to uh, manage his own capital. But even if I were advising, you know, uh, mutual funds, pension funds, I would be uh, probably getting more towards cash, maybe buy some physical gold and silver, even though they probably wouldn't be interested in doing that. And maybe even go into the uh, bond market, uh, US uh, bond market uh, treasuries. But even that. You know, with all the problems about the national debt, the debt ceiling, uh, keeping the government running. I don't know. I think people need to, uh, how can I say, uh, lose, you know, decrease the weighting of equities and uh, bonds in their portfolio. Maybe stay more in the short term uh, in T-bills. And of course, continue to... Uh, stack physical gold and silver. I think uh, the small individual investor, the person who's trying to safeguard some, you know, wealth that they've been able to save, they have to think like, you know, the Russian or the Chinese central bank. Um, they need to accumulate uh, gold and silver and not look at it every, you know, in terms of uh, 
they can't worry about the price, you know, uh, like central banks don't worry about the price. They buy it because it's money and they have and they keep it as an asset. That's the the same way that people, you know, individuals like me or like you that are watching the uh, my my videos should should do as well. And if you want to speculate to maybe try to make short term uh, profits, that's a different story. Then you can go, you know, into the mining stocks or you can trade futures on gold and silver. But that's a different story. Um, and you need to if you're going to be trading, uh, my advice is that it's a business business. Uh, <laughs> And if you have a full time job and you try to trade and it's a job that's got nothing to do with markets, I think it's very difficult. I don't advise people to do that. Um, so what's going on today in terms of the markets? Well, uh, gold is virtually unchanged today. It's 1255.50 here as I speak. It's uh, about 10 minutes to the close on COMEX regular uh, session. Silver continuing to go down 1682 even though this morning in London we got up above 17 but then when the US came in you know just uh, traded lower um, Dow Jones up 20 points up a tenth of a percent 20,950 so not doing much there uh, dollar index unchanged 9913 uh, what else yeah, that's about it. So uh, markets are very quiet today. We do have a non-farm payroll on Friday, and I think we've got an FOMC meeting this week. It's uh, I don't think they're going to do anything this week, and it's not the meeting where they come out with a press conference. So I don't think it's uh, relevant, this FOMC. Um, you know, I think the market's still expecting the Fed to hike uh, next month. Uh, which I find a little bit, I think they're realizing that the economy is slowing down. So they need to hike and get that Fed funds target uh, towards one or maybe one and a half percent. So when the recession start, they can start cutting rates because they couldn't cut rates, you know, from near zero. So, uh, yeah, that's it for now. Um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please give me a thumbs up, share it far and wide. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do. And if you like to make a donation, if you think uh, uh, my videos add value, uh, there's some links uh, below in the description. Take care. Bye.